Ryan here. Thanks for showing up. This is one of my favorite days of the year. Uh, go figure. I absolutely love National Signing Day. Uh, I love to be able to see the future. I love to be able to talk about our future players and then really give thanks to everybody who's involved in this. So uh, I, I just I know it's a little bit different than most years. I know, you know, this morning I'm on with donors and boosters and and friends of the pr uh, program. And uh, it, it was just a lot different than it's been. So I'm going to do everything I can to bring some type of normalcy to this, uh, especially uh, the way it is in terms of how we talk about our players. But, you know, I want to give a few thanks first. Uh, one, I just want to thank our president, Joan Gable, our athletic director, Mark Coyle, uh, for just leading our football team through this, leading us through the recruiting challenges and, uh, you know, allowing us to be as creative as we possibly can. And I just want to thank them for doing that and having the confidence in us that we could be able to get this done and sign such a historical class, even in the midst of a pandemic, uh, which again, uh, which people are going to talk about and they're not going to talk about. This is one of the greatest classes ever to come to the University of Minnesota in recent football years. Uh, and it's during a pandemic. So I think that deserves a lot of credit for a lot of people. The Garrett Chernoffs, the Marcus Hendricksons, um, the John Shakels, uh, the Ruziks, uh, the Murphs, uh, Coco, and then uh, obviously Emily Litwin. It's her birthday today. She's 25 years old. They're all part of our uh, uh, recruiting staff and do an unbelievable job uh, for us. So uh, I wanted to make sure I mentioned their names. Uh, this is a class. We had 19 new gophers today. And again, not all signees in terms of NLIs, but uh, but again, 19 Gophers, and we're really excited about that. As you kind of look into the future, we've talked a little bit about the numbers of how this is going to work. It's a lower number class than maybe what you're used to with us in the first three years for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one reason being, not sure how many seniors are going to come back, how many scholarships are going to be allowed over the 85. And then also with the new rules transitioning into January, and you're talking this one-time transfer rule, uh, you can see already how many players have entered the portal. We're going to keep an open mind to keeping scholarships open and not having this, clo th this, this recruiting class shut. Uh, so we're open to that. And it's a little bit like the signing day is a little bit more like the NFL draft. And then there's still a free agent market that's coming a little bit later on. College football swinging a little bit towards that. So I uh, just wanted to give everybody a heads up. The core nucleus of what we do will not change. It's all about the fit. It's all about high school development. But there will be a few scholarships here and there that we will have available uh, for maybe some immediate needs that will come along from now all the way to the season. So we're really excited about keeping those opportunities open uh, for our, our class and the future of our football program. Uh, I do want to hit on a few class notes. This is the opening statement. Then we'll kind of get into a few questions uh, and then I'll talk about the players. So we'll do it that way. But it's ranked 22, uh, number 22 in the country, according to the 247 rankings, which would be the highest ever in the modern day era of um, uh, of recruiting uh, and the recruiting sites. 26 right now on the composite, which is a combination of all of them put together. And again, I'm not a huge number person. But it matters to the outside world because you're going to you're going to talk about it. And there's the kids talk about that. The players talk about that. The student athletes talk about that. And so that's why we're bringing that up. So it's tied for the highest ever. The average ranking per recruit is the 24 and 24 seven is the highest ever. The last four classes, 18, 19, 20 and now 21 are the strongest four year run in a row ever at the University of Minnesota. Which again, as you're starting to look at what we're building and where we're headed, we're adding that type of depth, that type of expectation as we go forward. We signed six four-star recruits, Ethan, uh, Steven Ortiz, Bucky, Devin Eastern, Cameron James, and Jacob Schuster. That's the most ever. Uh, first time we've ever had a signed, uh, having signed an ESPN 300 prospect in four consecutive classes. Ethan, our quarterback, being the one in this class. Signed prospects out of 10 different states. You know, we talked even on the D-line. We're going to go from west to east. We're going to go from coast to coast to go find the best defensive line when we possibly can. And we feel like we did that and accomplished that coast to coast, all four time zones represented. 
signed three of the top eight ranked players in the state of Illinois, which is a huge, huge state for us, eighth and Bucky and Cam James, and then signed a top 10 player in five different states with Arizona, Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, and Washington. So again, I know that we're talking about becoming a national brand. We're talking about becoming a national program. Well, part of that too is taking care of the in-state talent, doing everything you can to find the right fit right here in our home state of Minnesota, the surrounding six hour radius, seven hour radius around here, like we've always said, and then go and find the right fit. And when you do go outside of that to fit your program. So there's a lot of other uh, stats that I would read off, but I'm not gonna sit here and bore everybody. I know Andy cleared an hour and 23 minutes uh, out of his time and also added a few minutes after that. So I take it as a compliment, Andy. Uh, and uh, I, I am not just going to sit here and read this entirely. We're going to break it up a little bit. So with that said, I'll open up for some questions. And then what I'd like to be able to do is start talking about some student athletes, finish up with a few key stats, and maybe ask a few at the very end on, on some follow-ups after I get done with that. But some initial questions, we'll get the meat of it and then get some questions at the end. I think that's the way we'll do it, if that's okay. So open up for any questions uh, prior to talking about the players. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take a couple questions. We'll start with Andy Greeter. Andy, go ahead. Hey, PJ, that was a, that was a compliment. I enjoy the, the bios and the stories about the players. It was, uh, it was appreciative. Um, so, yeah, I've got, I've got two hours, so I've got all the time. <laughs> Listen, if I'm up here two hours, man, just take the cane and just whisk me <laughs> off, man. Just pull me off stage. Sure. Um, when, when we look at, uh, at offensive line recruiting, we've got two guys in this class and, and five in the last three years. I know you guys had seven. I think it was 17 or 18. Obviously, those numbers are going to fluctuate. Um, where do you want to go with offensive line recruiting uh, going forward? That's a really good question, Andy. And when you look at signing day, you're looking at every single position. Um, next year, we're going to have seven freshman scholarship players on the O-line. Uh, we feel like, again, with the addition possibly, as we keep going forward, when you get into the free agency part, there could be some type of room for that, not only for this uh, next year, but the following years as you go for multiple, multiple year players. Uh, but right now, I feel really good about where we're at. Now, you never know what's going to happen and when people are going to move on. I've talked to a lot of them. I have a really good idea of where we're headed on the O-line. But, uh, I mean, you look at just, you know, you always look two years out. I feel really good about the youth we have that we're going to develop. I feel really good about next year in terms of the experience we have coming back, which gives those freshmen another year to develop before they become sophomores and you continue to put them in there and add to the class, whether more recruiting or some type of transfer coming in as well. So I feel really good about where we're at and the nucleus and the foundation that we have built with the freshmen that are on our football team right now. Let's go to Ryan Burns, Ryan. Hey, PJ, I wanna ask you about a couple of recruiting battles that you're able to win and some states that I haven't seen Minnesota go into in some time. Talking about Justin Wally in Mississippi, Jacob Schuster in the state of Washington, and then Stephen Ortiz in, in the state of Arizona there. What was the key to getting a, those three guys who are obviously very sought after prospects from places that Minnesota hasn't traditionally recruited before? Yeah, Ryan, really good question. Remember, I'm all about fit. I'm about fit, right? And wherever that fit is, uh, you'd love to be able to go eight for eight in the state of Minnesota with everybody fitting exactly your vision and what we're doing here at the University of Minnesota. Not every kid in Florida goes to Florida. Not every kid in Texas goes to Texas. Not every Illinois kid goes to Illinois. It, it just, it's part of it. And sometimes when you look at it, I told Coach Wilt at the beginning, especially when you talk about those three kids, um, when you're talking about Jacob Schuster, I said, we're going to go wherever we got to find the best defensive linemen that fit us, play like we want them to play, fit our culture, fit our program, fit our values. We're going to go get because they're very difficult to find. And so we went out to Washington and Coach Wilt has a lot of connections, a lot of different places, found Jacob and we watched his film and it was better than any film we've watched internally. And we're sitting there going, we've got to find a way to get to know this guy. And we did. And it was a perfect fit. He uh, had never technically visited here, but he did on his own. He came with his brothers uh, and we were not allowed to see him, not allowed to talk with them, not allowed to do anything like that. But he got to see the campus for one or two days by himself with his brothers at a, at a non-recruited type way. 
you got to see it for what it was and see what you wanted to go see, do your own homework. Uh, and then won that battle after that. So again, that just shows when people come here, that's one of the best parts, our culture, our people are fit. But then when you throw in the twin cities in the state of Minnesota, uh, that, that takes it over the top for a lot of these people. And this is a kid all the way from Washington. Um, and as my, as mom Fellini, she, she is a special, special person allowing her son to go all the way over here, uh, to Minnesota, but she was on board right from the start. Uh, she's got a lot of energy. She's raised those boys the right way, uh, and raised them to be different and, and go, go accomplish your dreams, wherever that is. Uh, so really happy with that. Justin Wally, there's one that, you know, when we're looking at DBs and you're looking for athletes, you know, a lot of people, uh, look in the North, but you also look in the South. And Paul Haynes has a lot of different connections to a lot of people. And we found Mr. Mississippi and Mississippi river starts in Minnesota and goes all the way down. But we're talking about Mr. Mississippi in six a. So we need to find young players in the secondary that can help contribute and play early with Ben St. Juice being older, right. With Coney Durr being older, right. As you're starting to look at Jordan Howden's played a lot of football for us. But when you look at what we brought in with the Michael Dixons and the Jalen Glazes and the Miles Flemings, and then you add this young DB crew, it's looking really good. But Justin Wally, I mean, he's, he's one of the hidden gems of this class. And it was hard. His brother plays at Mississippi State. Phenomenal player. So you're talking about Mr. Mississippi in 6A, leaving Mississippi with the pressure that he has to come to Minnesota. But he's a different young man. If you know him like I know him, that's a no-brainer for him. For him, maybe not for everybody, but for him, he was going to kick return, punt return, do some things on offense for us, and then obviously play defense and play corner. He is a dynamic athlete, and we needed to find dynamic athletes that could help us at a younger age, help us in the secondary as we continue to move forward, not just to help us to go at, okay, you have to do this, but to provide depth so we can continue to go from game one to game 12 and game 13, 14, and not take any dips. And then Steven Ortiz, uh, coach Harris Simiak, our, our safeties coach, gets the credit on this one. Uh, built a bond with his dad. This kid could have went anywhere, Oregon, Washington. He's a pack. Some of these kids are Pac-12 kids coming to the Midwest and going to Minnesota to play in the Big Ten. But you talk about the ultimate connector. Uh, his dad, we just call him Pops. He's just Pops to everybody. I mean, you talk about somebody who helped us recruit throughout the, the, the entire recruiting process. But again, a guy who can play nickel, he can play safety, he can play corner, he's got a lot of value. And again, he's different. We'll talk about how he's different here when I actually break him down and talk specifically about him. But again, Ryan, to answer your question simply, it's fit. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we are gonna comb through the entire nation to find the right fit. We hope and start with the fit is right here in the state of Minnesota. That's where our effort is. And then we're gonna go out from there, but it's about fit, period. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to Meg and Ryan with Star Tribune. Hey, PJ, how are you? Hi, Meg. Doing elite. Okay. Um, I know you can't talk about any unsigned guys, but I would guess I was wondering if you could talk generally. Um, this year with how weird recruiting has been, you know, there people can't travel, visit campuses or whatnot. Um, you know, more kids might be delaying their decision until February or whatnot. And I guess I'm curious from your perspective, you know, how maybe you would you know, talk to a kid who was, who was maybe wrestling with that decision or just, you know, trying to put it off a little bit more until they can feel like they have all the information. they. Need. Yeah, we support them. You know, I'm not allowed to mention any uh, unsigned kids, but you know, we have uh, one and that's okay. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's part of the process. You support them, you love them, you, you, you're there for them. It's a year to be able to have incredible empathy. And remember, we said at the beginning, we're going to be the most empathetic staff and hopefully be the most empathetic team and be the most empathetic head coach in the country somehow, some way. There, there's no difference with this. Um, there's a signing day in December and a signing day in February for a particular reason. And again, so many people are dealing with so many different things, way beyond just signing on a certain day. There's factors that come into that. There's timing that comes into that. There are situations within the family that come into that, all types of certain things. And you're there to support them. You're there to encourage them uh, and be there for them throughout their entire journey. And that, that's what recruiting is about. Happens all over the country, right? People flip here, people flip there, people sign, people don't sign. It's just part of the day. And you've got to be willing to be able to respond to that. Uh, fortunately for us, it hasn't happened a lot. It's happened, but it hasn't happened a lot. Uh, and I think that's credit to the relationships we built. 
Um, but again, it, it happens and you're there for those young men and support them the best way you possibly can as they go through this, because it is a very difficult time. It's a huge decision. Let's go to Mike Grimm. Mike, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Coach, maybe on the flip side of, of what Megan was asking, I'll ask you the opposite of that in the sense, were you um, surprised or relieved that that in a year like this that you ended up, I think you had 19 commits, you had 18 signed, that there weren't as many that maybe wanted to wait, even though most of those guys did not end up coming to campus? That's a great question. I mean, just opposite of what, what Meg said, right? I mean, that's the expectation. You know, you're going in with the expectation the best you possibly can of knowing who's going to and who won't. Uh, and again, I think we knew exactly what we were going to be able to get and knew the situations prior to this, knew exactly what was coming down. I'm really proud of our staff uh, and the relationships they've built with these young men uh, and these student athletes who are incredible people. Uh, you know, Garrett Chernoff and I discussed right before we got in here and just how excited we are about the people that are coming inside here. Uh, our program, the student athletes, academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, uh, the life these kids live. Uh, it's, it's so fun to be able to get to know them. And, and we didn't even, I mean, half of them haven't even shaken their hand or met them in person or they haven't met me. I mean, can you imagine not meeting me and thinking, well, this guy, and then you get nine months of me without ever meeting me, nine months of Zoom, right? And then not even being around to see, hey, you know, I got to see what this guy's all about. So I give our staff a recruiting staff, our football staff, a ton of credit for being able to create that experience for those student athletes away from the in-person experience, which was incredibly challenging. As I said before, if you're not in that football locker room, nobody has any idea what those young players are going through for a football season. If you're not being recruited in 2020 for the 2021 class, and you're not in that 21 class, it's going to be hard for any of you to get not just you, but anybody in general to understand what these young people are going through. It, it's a very unique environment, a unique year to be able to pick schools and, and, and get the right fit. But we feel like we have that. And uh, we're excited about the guys who have signed for sure. Coach, I think Mike has a follow-up to that question. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, j just as a follow-up, and look, every school has a signing class, so everyone had to deal with this. But for you, what, what did you do to create that connection when kids couldn't come to campus? I know there was a lot of virtual stuff, obviously, and, and work through not meeting you in person and only on a computer screen. Well, that's when you, you, you just got to be you. You know, there's not all these picnics and unofficial visits and spring games and things to come to. There's none of that. So you're going to have to really work really hard at being able to create that experience in all of those venues virtually. Uh, and we did everything we could to do that. Uh, I remember when the pandemic first hit, we have contingency plans in our program for everything. You think you have them for everything. Uh, we might not have had a COVID-19 specialized like door that you unlock and open and pull out like here's our contingency plan. But there was a contingency plan if we got ever somehow, some way, if a tidal wave, hurricane, tornado, earthquake happened in the state of Minnesota, we're going to be able to have a plan for it. And we went right into that protocol. We went right into that contingency plan. I mean, the day the pandemic hit. We were on Zoom. We were with virtual visits. We would kick that in. And you have those things for a reason. And you might not ever think you're going to use them. Uh, and it might sound like Zoom. I mean, before this year, who ever heard of Zoom? I mean, who really cared about Zoom? And now everybody uses Zoom, right? So it's finding those ways to be able to create that. I think it was really helpful to be able to get the whole family together on Zoom. Uh, and you could do that, whether it was on Zoom, whether it was on FaceTime, you could get everybody together at one time. Sometimes you're waiting for mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or aunt, uncle, guardian to get home from work, to get everybody in the same room. You didn't have to do that. You could talk a lot more to people than maybe you normally do because of Zoom and because of it virtually. So you, you, you find the ways that it could be an advantage and you highlight those parts. But you, those virtual tours and those virtual visits were incredible for us, especially early on. Thank you, coach. Let's go to Daniel House. Daniel. Hey, PJ, one thing I've noticed with this D-line class is the versatility of those guys. How much did you value that during the evaluation process? 
Uh, tremendously. I'm glad you noticed that. Uh, we talked about guys like Devin Eastern, right? That's the highest ranked defensive lineman in the history of Minnesota, right here from the state of Minnesota and Shakopee, Minnesota. But he's 6'6", 285 pounds. He can play inside. He can play outside. Five technique, three technique. Uh, you, you look at Jacob Schuster, he can play nose, he can play three, you can move, you can move him around, you can go on and on about all of our defensive linemen. Um, and they can they can play multiple positions, even our ends. You know, when you're looking at a guy like Austin Booker, I mean, he can play the rush end, he can play the five technique, he's a big man. Uh, again, has to put on the weight to be able to get to that five technique, but he will naturally he will. So when you're getting around to all of that, I think that's really important to understand. I mean, Big Luther, Luther can play three and five. He's a former basketball player, can do both. I mean, when we're talking about all these guys, that's part of what we're going to talk about. But the versatility was everything. Which in a year like this year, we had four D tackles, period. And two of them were freshmen last game. And we had to rotate them. And it didn't matter if you played nose or three, you got to play inside. Not only that, we had another plan to make sure that Cheney could possibly play outside if we got in a predicament. And he's a freshman. So you have to have that versatility. I love what we've done with the D-line. I love what we've done to add talent to that. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to share that with you. Let's go back to Ryan Burns. Hey, Jay, you signed three of the top eight kids from the state of Illinois, and Ethan Bucky and Cam James. Uh, how excited were you to make serious inroads in that upper echelon there in Illinois? Well, it's always going to be a big uh, uh, breeding ground for recruiting for us with all of our connections. Brian Callahan recruits the Chicagoland area. Coach Burns takes the Peoria area. And then with all of our connections, at least where I'm from, all the connections you have. And, you know, recruiting comes down to relationships and it comes down to people you trust. Uh, and when you're talking about a young man that you really want, you want to be able to have the other person on that phone describing that person to you being someone that you truly value, that you trust, that shares the same values you do, and also knows if it's a good fit or not. And that's what we have in the state of Illinois, the Chicagoland area, the entire state, is we feel like we have those relationships built with those high school coaches, with those trainers, things like that, that we feel that, you know, we, we could really make progress in the state. And I feel with those three top guys, three of the top eight, uh, we did what we needed to do in that state. Just like we got, you know, five different states we got a top 10 player out of those states uh same thing from the state of minnesota three of the top eight players we, we were able to get uh and, and again all about fit and um uh, really excited about the, the progress we're making in the chicagoland area and, and we'll continue to um you know recruit that area very heavily let's go back to meg and ryan pj something that i've um learned a bit about some of these recruits uh justin or Gophers now, I guess, um, just in talking to them is, I mean, they've told me that they feel like there's no other 2021 class in the country that's as close as they are. And I know that, you know, they've, they've gotten to know each other. And um, even despite some of the distance and whatnot, I guess I'm just kind of curious if you could speak to the relationships that they've been able to form. And if that's something that you feel is kind of unique to this class, how, how close they've gotten already. Well, yeah, first of all, I mean, the number one thing in our program is people. It's the connection, it's the fit, it's the it's togetherness, right? And so we're going to recruit and and bring in players that want the same similar type of family feel. They'll forget about me, I love you. And when you're talking about like Devin Eastern's mom, I mean, you talk about people who came in town that uh, couldn't be anywhere around us, couldn't be around here, but needed somebody to talk to about the state of Minnesota, uh, stop by their house, have their door open. That's what Tammy did. Uh, and when you have people that value the University of Minnesota, the state of Minnesota so much that they want to talk to other people about it and say how great it is. And it's not coming from the coaching staff. It's coming from some people that the people that live in Minnesota and are sending their son to Minnesota. And he's dreamed of playing at Minnesota his entire life. That's really important. And when, when, the, when the moms and the parents and the fathers get behind that, that's, that's really important. When you look at Steven Ortiz's uh, father and mother, I mean, Deanna and Pops. I mean, they, they organized a whole event themselves down in Florida for all the commits to get together in Florida. He's in Arizona. I mean, it's just amazing of what these parents did to, to, to when we couldn't get them all together to do it, they did it on their own. I, I think that's, that is special. And Meg, you said it right. I'm not sure they're right. I, I can't speak for every single uh, team in America, but I, I, this is the closest this might be one of the, if not the closest, closest recruiting class 
I've ever seen. And they went through a pandemic of complete separation, but found a way to come together. And I, I think that's really special. And it took the parents to be able to do that. Coach, there's no more questions in the chat. So if you want to proceed about, about some individuals, we can go ahead and, and do that now. All right, Andy just held up a sign. You get 38 minutes left. <laughs> 38. So here we go. Let, let's go ahead and talk about the class. Again, I'll, I'll get to some more statistics and then we'll get into the actual players. But highest ranked quarterback this decade uh, with eighth. And again, I'm not into the ranking. I'm not going to, but you have to realize that this is a really important class, really elite class as we keep going forward. Um, and this is all about building into the future. So second highest running back signee ever. That's two of the top three in the last two years. Um, Kai Thomas being last year, and then obviously Bucky being this year. Signed four of our highest 20 high school prospects ever at Minnesota in this class. Ethan Bucky, uh, Stephen Ortiz, and Devin Eastern. Uh, our staff has now signed nine of the top 20 high school prospects uh, prospects ever at Minnesota, including Curtis, Curtis Dunlap Jr., Daniel Falele, Daniel Jackson, uh, Tank, which you guys will get a chance to really watch play next year, and then Rashad Bateman. So uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good group of guys right there. This wide receiver class is the third highest ever. The last four classes at wide receiver are the top four wide receiver classes since the 24-7 started their rankings uh, at the University of Minnesota, which, again, putting value into who you are and finding a way to make sure that you have the proper athletes to do what we say we are going to do because everybody needs proof and you've got to continue to check the boxes as you go forward. And recruiting's obviously a major deal with that. Top seven high school wide receiver of all time at Minnesota with uh, Lamecki Brockington, Brockington signing with us. That makes three in the last four classes with Bateman and Daniel Jackson. Highest ranked tight end this decade, second highest all time at Minnesota with Jamison Gears. We all know how important the tight end is and is going to be in Mike Sanford's system. Again, when you're looking at this year, we've had a lot of tight ends be out COVID injury. Even last week, Brevin Span Ford being a little banged up. Um, we're, we're getting into that transition and tight ends going to be a lot more involved into the future as we keep going forward. Offensive line is the second highest average in the last dozen years. Elite quality players. Uh, with James and Purcell coming in. Cam James is a top five offensive lineman ever signed at the University of Minnesota. But he joins Daniel Falele, Curtis Dunlap Jr., and Blaze Andres, right? So we've signed four of those five, and we're going to continue to put that value as, as Andy's question was with the offensive line. I think that was Andy uh, or Ryan. Uh, Jacob Schuster is a top five defensive tackle, uh, joining Shad, Chaney, and Teague as that as well. Eastern. Schuster and Booker are all top 10 defensive linemen ever signed at the University of Minnesota. Highest ranked defensive line class in Gopher history. We wanted to focus on the D-line. We went out nationwide, found what we felt was the best fit. Six highest ranked linebacker ever signed at Minnesota with Devin Williams. And then um, second and fifth highest ranked high school cornerbacks of school history with Ortiz and Justin Wally. Highest ranked defensive back class ever signed at Minnesota, which is saying something because we've had six DBs drafted in the last seven years. And then we also signed Mr. Mississippi in 6A with Justin Wally. So I know that sits there and sounds, and it might sound like some programs that might have a jump start on us, like, so what? We do that every year. Well, we're getting there. And I think that's what everybody's got to understand is that we say that because we're checking off firsts, nevers, we're doing things that haven't been done before, even in the recruiting department. And we're going to keep doing that. And like we said before, we haven't had an offensive lineman drafted in what, 18 years. And I said, that's coming and it's coming really quickly. Right. So again, we said that four years ago that that was going to change. And we're starting to start to see how that is going to change, not only on the field to the national football league, but also recruiting and development through our program and then onward. So there's some more stats for you. Let's go ahead and talk about the players. We're going to start with Austin Booker from Center Grove High School in Greenwood, Indiana. Coach Eric Moore is the head coach there. Uh, we really appreciate all the help that he gave us uh, with Austin. You know, Austin has a very unique connection with us. His dad, Dwayne, played with Coach Wilt and then also played with J.J. Gaday's dad, Jay Gaday our offensive lineman. So there was immediate in there, not only there, right? His mom, Katie, 
played basketball with Grace Gaday, JJ Gaday's mom. And so when you talk about that fit, you had an inside source of telling him exactly what the program's like. One thing I like about it, it's a fit because we just sit there and say, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is what it's going to be like. It's either for you or not. And that's what we love about it. No one gets recruited in our, in our, in our program. It's a relationship to say, do you want this or do you not want this? Nobody gets here and ever says, well, I didn't know Coach Fleck had a lot of energy. I don't know that he talked so much. I had no idea he was that energetic. I could not tell. That is, that, that, that's not what this program's about. What you see is what you get. What we love about recruiting state champions, they're state champions. They've gone the entire way. He went 14-0, and six-day state champion in the state of Indiana. And again, never visited. This guy could have went to Oregon, could have went to a lot of places, Pac-12, Big Ten, ACC, SEC. We knew we had to clean up and be able to add depth and competition to the D-line. We felt we've done that with Austin Booker. So Austin Booker, the first commit we've talked about, signee. Next, Brady Boyd out of South Lake Carroll High School in South Lake, Texas. Uh, a lot of you know, remember the name Riley Dodge. That's the head coach there. Uh, traditional powerhouse in the state of Texas. This guy plays at the ultimate level of Texas football. Uh, also a wide receiver, uh, dad, Chris, mom, Dana, uh, incredible people. Uh, you know, his dad would always ask us football questions. Uh, what about the RPO game? He'd be taking notes, drawing different plays, talking to us the next day about what he's thought. And I, I just think that's awesome. I think that's really cool when a dad's that involved and, and just has questions to be able to bring back to his team, which is really neat. Uh, this is a young man that uh, we got a chance to actually be able to see in camp uh, about a year and a half ago uh, down there in Texas at, um, I think it was Stephen. Uh, was it uh, Stephen F. Austin? Where was it? It was here. Where was it? Can't remember where we actually saw him. He, I can't remember. He actually came here. I think he came here. Uh, actually came here for a camp, and uh, we got a chance to develop him, watch what he could do. This young man can tap his head on a goal, uh, the crossbar of the goalpost. Think about that. Talk about a vertical leap. He can play in space. He can play inside. He can play outside. He can go up and get the deep ball. He can play underneath. Um like I said, camp with us last year, he's still playing. And I think that's the one big thing right now is he's still playing. You know, Texas high school football goes deep into December, especially with their playoffs. He's still playing. He's going to be coming mid-year. Uh, all of our receivers that we're going to talk about are all coming here mid-year, which is really exciting, uh, especially with Rashad moving on to the National Football League. But uh, this young man is a really special player, incredible competitor, really excited to have Brady Boyd join our family. Next up. Uh, wide receiver, Lamecki Brockington, Colquitt County High School in Moultrie, Georgia. Coach Justin Rogers is the head coach there. Mom, Samantha, uh, unbelievable people. Uh, this is a young man who was courted by so many and committed to us, just kind of out of nowhere, just said, you yeah, listen, I, 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 I play a wide receiver. I know your pedigree of wide receiver development. I followed Tyler Johnson. I followed Rashad Bateman. I know what you guys have done. I know what Coach Simon has done with wide receivers. I'm in. He's coming in mid-year. Again, another person that never visited. Brady Boyd did visit. He had never visited. So again, a lot of courage and a lot of trust behind that decision. But again, saw the wide receiver development and uh, really excited to have Mecky here uh, starting in January with our football team. Next up, uh, somebody that everybody knows on this phone call probably pretty well, being in-state talent. Uh, Devin Eastern out of Shakopee High School in Shakopee, Minnesota. Uh, coach Ray Benton is the head football coach there. Not only that, he trains with the former Viking, Mike Morris, who's a big part of his life. Mom, Tammy, special lady. When you're talking about what she did to keep this class really connected, uh, especially during the time of the pandemic, is really special. He is uh, the definition of unrequired work. It, there's a required work that you have to do. And then there's an unrequired work that you choose to do or not. He is an unrequired work type person. 6'6", 285 pounds. Uh, again, him and his mom helped build this class, uh, overcome a lot of adversity in his life. Just excited to have him here. Again, highest ranked defensive lineman ever to commit to the University of Minnesota. He's going to be really special. Versatility to be inside, outside. Really special young man, really into his body, really into developing his body into a Big Ten defensive lineman. And again, he'll be joining us here very shortly. Uh, next up, 
another mid-year player, uh, something a little bit different. Again, we don't do this a lot, but we felt, you know, there's a lot of young players playing a linebacker this year. And I could see, you could start to see the development of that, but we thought about adding a uh, graduate transfer. And this guy was a home run for us. Jack Gibbons out of Abilene Christian university. He's originally from Texas, dad, Dan, mom, Jerry, uh, mid-year player. Um, he's moving in with Tanner Morgan here very shortly. He had 258 total tackles in college already. So you're talking about somebody who can play Mike. He can play Will. He's already played years of college football level. He's played to get FBS talent, FCS talent, but this guy plays above his competition. Always have. He's a Haufer. Uh, he's a 4.0. I think that's incredibly important to know. He's a Campbell Trophy finalist. If any of you know anything about the Campbell Trophy, uh, we had a player at Western Michigan um, uh, that, that won that award. And a lot of you uh, got a chance to follow Zach when we were at uh, Western Michigan. Uh, so uh, the Campbell Trophy is kind of like the academic Heisman. And he was a finalist for that. So really, really excited about bringing Jack Gibbons uh, into our program. And again, he's starting right away mid-year. Uh, we're excited about that. Okay, moving on. Tight end position is really important to our offense. We were going to take one tight end in this class. So it had to be the guy that we wanted. We got the number one guy on our board, and anytime you do that, uh, that's a win. And Jamison Gears from Providence Catholic High School out of New, Lex New Lenox, Illinois. Coach Coggs, who I've known for a very long time as a head football coach there, does an outstanding job. If Providence Camp Catholic sounds familiar, that's the exact same high school as Mariano Sori Marin, uh, who is Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week with 18 tackles against Nebraska last week. Dad Brian, Mom Jill. Uh, you talk about different things. We had a whole home visit with mom, whole families there, but then she took us to every single room in the house. So we got a full tour of the Gears house, which was really awesome. Um, last commit pre-pandemic. So right before the pandemic hit, Jameson committed to us. Uh, but again, our top tight end prospect, he's a young man that is physical in the run game, is going to be really good for us in the pass game, and his body hadn't even filled out yet. He's 6'6", six, six, about 240 pounds, and it's only going to continue to go up. Excuse me. Next up, Vibes is his nickname, Darius Green. Newton High School, Covington, Georgia. Coach Grant is the head high school coach down there. I tell you what, this young man, uh, Marsh has done an unbelievable job uh, raising this young man. I know he's really close to his grandmother. They have an unbelievable relationship. Talking to him last night, sitting right by his grandma, um, and just telling me how much his grandma means to him. And uh, th this young man, I, I don't think I've ever seen a high school film as physical as this one from the secondary position. If you get a chance, please watch it. Uh, he is incredibly violent on the field but a huge heart off the field. 6'1", 185 pounds, but he's got a five pound dog named Chloe that goes everywhere with him. Like if you go on Heather's Instagram, she's got a little Bella, and I'm not sure if Bella has an Instagram for the flex. I'm not sure if she does, she probably does. But, uh, but it's like Bella following Heather everywhere. And his dog Chloe follows him everywhere, always on the Zoom calls. Uh, Bella and Chloe have met just through virtual social distancing. Uh, they're excited to get to know each other in person at some point. Never visited. Never visited. So, again, another kid from the South, from Georgia, that had never visited. Uh, he's got an unbelievably fun personality. You are all going to love talking to him. Uh, extremely loyal. And he runs at 10, 600 meters. He can really fly. He's incredibly violent. Uh, this guy is going to add a lot of value uh, very soon to our program. Really excited to have Darius Vibes Green joining the Gophers. Next, uh, I know that we've kind of already hit a little bit on the Chicagoland area, but uh, Bucky Irving is kind of like Prince, just goes by Bucky. Hillcrest High School and Country Club Hills, Illinois. Uh, coach Weaver is the head high school coach there. Letitia's done an amazing job raising this young man. And if anybody wins the signing day award, it's Letitia. I mean, she's got shirts upon shirts that are all in that, you know, that, uh, that, that spray, kind of that spray graffiti type look that you can get in the mall right there in the middle. They got all types of shirts. I mean, all types of shirts made for Bucky and everybody at a signing day party. Uh, this guy is electric. Uh, he can play. Watch his highlight tape. He's so physical in the run game, so quick, so elusive, so explosive, but he's also an elite pass catcher, an elite wide receiver. 
uh, hung out with Ethan and Dino uh, in the off season during the pandemic because the Illinois, the state of Illinois did not play football in the fall. So they got together a lot and got a chance to be together. He's the second highest ever uh, to sign with us at the running back position. Uh, football is really important to Bucky. It is. It's really important to him. Uh, he's done a lot to get to this position and earn the scholarship that he did. A lot of people came after him, but, you know, not playing his senior year, he did have over 1,700 yards his junior year, 22 touchdowns, 400 plus some receiving yards with four receiving touchdowns just as a junior. Uh, and we're really excited about him uh, being, uh, being in our football program. Again, kind of like that one name, eh? it just goes by Bucky. Special, special personality, always a smile on his face. Can't wait to add him to that room that we have right now with Mo and Cam and Trey and Kai uh, and Bryce. It's, it, it's going to be a fun room to be able to be in, especially next year. Next up, we talked about the offensive line. I think that was Andy's question. Um, Cameron James, Simeon Career Academy, Simeon High School out of Chicago, Chicago Illinois. Same high school as Derek Rose. Uh, if you know that when you're when you're from Chicago, you better know that uh, Charles and Serena are his parents. Charles is an unbelievable griller when you're talking about, you know, any type of food. He's going to cook it. If there's one home visit you're looking forward to, it's an offensive lineman's. And uh, we were looking forward to that one. Unfortunately, that one got canceled because of, of COVID. But uh, with with his father, he said, we'll find a way to be able to get some at the tailgate at some point. So if anybody finds the James family, sees Charles over there. Stop by that tailgate at some point because you're going to get some elite food and some elite meat, I promise. Coach Colbreth is a high school coach there. Uh, gigantic man, uh, over 6'8", close to 6'9", already 315 pounds. Uh, we wanted to be – we love we love big players on the offensive line. When you're in the Big Ten, you better have big offensive linemen, same thing, or especially when you're with our system. Uh, he kind of makes Devin Eastern look a little bit small if that makes sense. There's a great picture of those two standing by each other. Uh, and it, it's pretty amazing to see their actual comparisons. Uh, but he committed without visiting. And a guy, another, another guy who, who came here without even seeing the place. And again, when you're talking about offensive linemen, one of the highest ever uh, coming here. And we're really excited about his future. His ceiling is incredibly high. Next up, the Calic Manis family, right? You've got Ethan and you got Dino and you can't talk about them without each other. So we'll start with Dino, and then we'll go to Ethan. Uh, Dino's a wide receiver. Uh, uh, coach Glashgall is, is the head football coach there. Um, you know, this family is really important. I know that we talked about them on the, on the Big Ten Network. Anytime you're talking about the quarterback and wide receiver of your program, uh, Alex and Colleen have done a great job raising their family. Not only do they have their other jobs, they also own a pizza shop. Uh, where I think they're all doing some big signing party with all the all the signees here soon. Again, going to Meg's question, all that connection that we're talking about. Uh, but when you're talking about Dino, uh, actually does ballet uh, to help his footwork. He's been doing it for quite a while right now. Uh, but he is a very talented player. He's going to be able to help us on special teams, help us at the wide receiver position. Uh, he is sneaky fast, and he's sneaky strong. One of the hardest workers of the class when you look at what he's been able to do. When you're talking about Ethan, anytime you talk about the quarterback, it's a really important position. Ethan, in my opinion, is a little bit more of a dual threat quarterback. He can really run. He's big. He's long. He's got a good arm. Uh, so he's a good passer in the pocket, can make the throws outside the pocket, can do some of the run game, the ultimate leader. Uh, you know, this is the first commit of the class. Uh, him and his brother. And when you're the first commit of the class, somebody's got to jump in the pool first. Somebody's got to be able to test the waters. And he jumped in. I mean, cannonball. Didn't stick his toe in. I mean, he jumped in. Huge cannonball and uh, really kicked off the, the class strong. You know, we were out there. Uh, again, we visited the school. We couldn't see him last year, but we visited the school. And we kind of knew it was meant to be when, you know, you're in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and you all know how much I love Wisconsin, but we're in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and there's a huge snowstorm, and we get stranded in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and we actually, it's Coach Callahan, Coach Sanford, which was in his first few days of actually having the job, uh, but he came from Utah State, so he's he's used to it. He's a SoCal guy, but he, he gets it. He's been all over Boise, Utah State, Notre Dame. He understands. But we got stranded, and here we are in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I don't know what there is much to do in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I never really found out, but there was this one little restaurant open. 
And here we are, three college football coaches. We just got a chance to recruit that area, including Antioch High School. And there's nothing else to do inside this restaurant except there's a Scrabble board sitting over in the corner uh, by this bookshelf. Yeah, it's kind of restaurant it was. And so we grabbed the Scrabble board and played Scrabble all day, all night, because there was nothing else to do. It was either sit in your hotel room. We made calls, we made recruiting calls, did recruiting and played Scrabble and checked each other to make sure that the words were accurate and actual words because Coach Callahan thinks words are words at times, but sometimes aren't. So we had to check him on that. Uh, but our, going back to Ethan, uh, really, really uh, excited about his future. When you talk about a leader, he is a true leader and he is infectious and he can't wait to get better. That's what you love about him. He knows he's not a finished product. He can't wait to be coached. And that's all he keeps talking about. Can't wait to be coached, coach. Can't wait to be coached. So He'll be getting coached here very soon. So he's going to play his senior season. Both him and Dino are going to play their senior season uh, coming up in the spring and then join us in the summer. Next up, uh, Eli Mao from Chanhassen High School, Chanhassen, Minnesota, which is actually on the way to our lake house over there on the west side of Lake Minnetonka. Uh, Eric and Mandy are his parents. Really excited to get another in-state talent, especially at the linebacker position, to add depth, add value. Add uh, th th This guy is a, a candidate for Mr. Football, or was, candidate for Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota. And 42 tackles in only five games played this year. He's the ultimate howfer. You talk about effort, how Eli does that. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to him and having a phone call and a FaceTime with the family, and it's interesting because Mandy asked me, she goes, uh, Coach, like, how's your question? I'm like, yeah, you can ask me anything, you know, anything. And here I'm thinking, okay, what hard question am I going to get? Because I like the hard questions too. And she goes, were you at Costco the other day? And I was like, Costco, Costco. In fact, I was. I, I, I never do much of the shopping, but Costco to me is kind of like Target. Like Target to Heather's Costco with me because Heather says you can walk into Target, don't want to buy anything at Target and walk out with two carts full at Target right? That's target, right? Well, to me, it's like Costco. I just want to go in and look, but I, then I get mesmerized by everything. The only problem with Costco at the time was the samples were fake. They weren't real samples. They can't have that during COVID-19. So anyway, long story short, she said, were you at Costco the other day? I said, absolutely. She goes, I was going to come up to you, but I was just, I just, I just, I just didn't. And I, there's not really a punchline to that. She just said, I just didn't. I said, well, what made on earth made you think you couldn't approach me? I said, you can come up to me anytime, you know? She's like, I just didn't want to be one of those people. I said, well, if I'm going to coach your son, you better come up to me anytime you want, wherever you see me. Because when you do see me out, it's not very often, but when you do see me out, make sure you get a chance to say hi. So, uh, Mandy, I appreciate you sharing that Costco story. But I guess it's kind of like seeing your elementary school teacher in the grocery store. It's like your grocery school, like the elementary school teacher is not supposed to go to the grocery store. I remember when I was a kid in elementary school, you'd see him in the store, be like, what are you doing here? You can't be in the grocery store. You're supposed to be at school. Like you're supposed to be coaching. You can't be in Costco on a Thursday night. Anyway, that's our Thursday nights right now, Costco, since everything's shut down. But hopefully soon to be open when everything's safe. All right, moving on. Luther McCoy, Creekside High School, St. John's, Florida. Coach McIntyre uh, is the head football coach out there. Luther Sr. and Rabrina done an amazing job with this young man. Massive man. We talk about getting defensive linemen from the West Coast to the East Coast. Loves ice cream. And anybody who's on the D-line who loves ice cream, I'm a fan of. I love ice cream. I just can't play on the D-line. Nor do I look like I can play on the D-line or look like I can play football. Uh, former basketball players, got incredible feet, great length. Uh, had a lot of people courting him late. And we're just glad we got a chance to get him. Again, coast to coast. He is very raw. Only played football two years. Uh, but we're really excited about where he is and the development of this young man as we continue to go in the future. So Luther McCoy from, again, St. John's, Florida, Creekside High School. Moving on, Dylan McGill, wide receiver, 6'3", 210 pounds. If you, the name sounds familiar, he was part of last year's class and part of a gray shirt uh, for a lot of different reasons. And using the gray shirt as an advantage is what it's used for. And it's a perfect time and the perfect timing for him to come into our program. Uh, it, it kind of the line and the build of think Seth Green in terms of the build. Uh, Dylan can really run, played wide receiver, played quarterback, was kind of a jack of all trades for his high school at Mesquite High School down in Mesquite, Texas, with Coach Fleener down there. Um, Mom, Sarah, Dad, Derek, so excited for him. It's been a long time, long time coming for this young man. This is the same young man 
who has videos and made videos with all the hard times we've been going through with social injustice in our world will take time to stop somebody down on their luck, uh, somebody homeless on the street, video it and give that person money, give them a meal, give them a blanket, video it, and basically say, this is what the world should look like. This is what all of us should do. This is what the norm should look like. We're talking about an unbelievable humanitarian who's a special football player as well. He's got un an unbelievable story. Um, this is what every person should be. His life's about serving and giving. I just can't wait for him to be here. He's coming mid-year finally. I mean, I say mid-year, it's, it's really a year and a half uh, after when we're really supposed to get him. So we're just so excited that he's finally here. Um, we saw him two years ago uh, down in Texas at the uh, Stephen F. Austin camp. Uh, and again, that, those, I tell you, I get my Texas boys at times mixed up. So that's where I was talking about with Brady, which one I saw where. But again, that's, uh, we're really excited to have Dylan join us here very shortly. And I know he's really excited. Next up, had to go out to Arizona to get our next defensive back. And from Goodyear, Arizona, Stephen Ortiz Jr. from Desert Edge High School. Uh, dad, Pops. Uh, Mom, Deanna. Uh, his dad's name, we call him Pops, Stephen, right? Uh, Stephen Sr. But he's from the Bronx, uh, from, from New York. Uh, that's where his dad's from, ex-law enforcement. And you talk about a trailblazer, Stephen Ortiz Jr., Here's a young man that's really a Pac-12 kid on the West Coast. Everybody thinks he's going to go to the Pac-12, and then, boom, out of nowhere, commits to Minnesota. And he's a trailblazer. Uh, this is not outside the kid's DNA. This is the same kid, right, that when he came to Arizona, could have picked maybe one of the major programs in Arizona to go play for. He said, nope, Dad, you know what? I'm going to play for Desert Edge. We're going to make something out of Desert Edge High School. That's amazing. Not only that. We're worried about kids transition or student athletes transitions in high school from to high school to college. He lives in his own casita in the backyard. So he already has his own home at his home in the backyard. So his parents, they live in their house with his sisters. Right. And then he lives in the backyard. There's a pool. And then on the opposite side of the pool is his casita. So he already has been living by himself for years. So the transition for being able to do that has been unbelievable. Um, He's kind of been on his own. Mr. Personality, you could call him. He's very infectious. Uh, he, he loves to talk. Uh, him and I get along just fine. But again, never visited until he had to come in on his own. And him and his family came in on their own, on their own dime, without being around us, not speaking with us, being around, taking in the Twin City area, and then found a way. And he was already committed at this point to just reassure and verify this is the place for him. Uh, first time I ever called him, this is an embarrassing story, but I tell it because it's all part of the experience. First time I ever FaceTime him, he's got a mask on his face. And I'm talking about the masks, like the mud masks for your skin. And, uh, and I'm sitting there thinking, this guy is very comfortable with himself. That's for sure. He's going to be just fine on an island one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Because I didn't even know what it was. I did that one time in my life. And I did it maybe a week before Heather and I got married. Why? Because you do right before you get married, you do exactly what you're supposed to. You're supposed to do that anyway, but you definitely do it when your wife tells you a week before your wedding, put a mask on your face for your pores, you do it. Well, he had it on there. Go coach. It's good for my skin. It's really good for my skin. So we're going to add a Puerto Rican flag up at our practice field. We represent all the countries from where our players are from. And uh, we're really excited about the Ortiz family. You talk about culture, connectivity from parents, can't thank his family enough uh, for all they've done. Steven's an amazing young man, really good student, and uh, really excited to bring him up to Minnesota. He's so excited. He's been repping that maroon and gold for a while now. Next up, in-state talent. Annandale High School, Annandale, Minnesota. Logan Purcell, Coach Walters, the head coach over there. Uh, he's actually in Florida right now. Uh, there's a lot of things that are open down there. So he's down there actually enjoying some vacation with his family. Uh, Chip and Michelle are, are, are his parents. Uh, again, a guy that is going to grow into something really special. He's 6'7", about 255, 260 pounds right now with a ton of room to grow. Here's a young man, the blue collar guy, loves, he has a summer job every year. He puts in docks, puts the docks in, in the lakes, takes the docks out. So every time I talked to him in the summer, he was in his, he had his galoshes on or had his waders on. And there he is putting the dock on, holding the phone, putting the dock in. Um, really proud of uh, his family for what they've been able to do. He loves the outdoors. He's a true Minnesotan, loves to spend time with his family and definitely loves to be outdoors. Incredibly intelligent. 
and uh, part of the University of Minnesota academic uh, uh, reputation is part of the reason why he's actually coming. Uh, so we're really excited about having him here again, Logan Purcell from a a Annandale. Next up, I had to go out to Washington to get this young man. But when you watch his film, you, we would have went to Alaska. We would have went to different countries to get this guy. It didn't matter where he was. You talk about the ultimate how for up front. Watch his highlight tape. Watch his game film. He plays with relentless energy, relentless effort all the time up front. And he's disruptive. Uh, Jacob Schuster, Tumwater High School in Tumwater, Washington. Coach Beatty's the head football coach out there. Mom, Fellini, family is really close. And he actually came out to visit, again, by himself with his brothers, without mom. That's how much mom trusts the brothers, trust him to make that decision. Could have stayed on the West Coast, could have went to all the Pac-12 schools, decided to come to Minnesota in the Big Ten. Uh, incredible how, incredible high motor. Family's really important to him. He's a top 20 defensive tackle in the country. We wanted to go find the best D tackles that fit us. And we went out there and found one. Uh, didn't play football this year with the cancellation in the state of Washington, very similar to the state of Illinois. But when you talk about a guy that can have a possibility of making an immediate impact and providing depth, even as a high school student, this guy can do it because he's incredibly strong, dedicates himself to his work ethic, his body, his strength, and his future. 6'2", about 300 pounds right now, Jacob Schuster. All right, next up, Mr. Mississippi, right? So Mr. Mississippi in 6A came up to Mississippi and came over to Minnesota. This young man, parents, Oliver, mom, Candace, he's from D'Iberville High School in D'Iberville, Mississippi. Coach Dolan's the head football coach there. Hardest part about recruiting Justin Wally was convincing his mom not that it was warm up here all the time. Now, she knew that. You couldn't fool her. I think the, the people in Mississippi made sure she knew that, whether it was from the, the competing schools in Mississippi telling her that. She knew it would be cold in January, February. But just getting her to be able to, to fully agree with Justin's vision of what he had for his life. Uh, she has another son that goes to Mississippi State. Could have stayed right there. Uh, could have had, you know, two cowbells. Uh, in, instead, we're going to put a row the boat sticker on one of those cowbells. And, and that's when she goes to the Mississippi State games. That's what she's going to have. And we're going to find a way to make it all work for everybody. But this guy is incredibly versatile. Maybe the most versatile player that we recruited in this class. Phenomenal running back and offensive film. Really good defensive corner film. Punt returner, kick returner, can do it all. And has an un unbelievable amount of confidence. He's mid-year. He'll be here in January, which is immediate impact for us, offense, defense, and special teams wise. You know, his, his dad kept saying, you know, wherever he ends up, all the way up to the last week, it was like they, they, they were doing everything they could to keep him in Mississippi, everything they could. But he was so he was so all in. And I remember him telling me about three weeks ago, Coach, if I wanted to decommit, I would have done that three months ago. I've been hearing this for a long time. This is old news to me. Don't worry about me. But it was funny because Oliver always said when we would sit there and FaceTime is, listen, Coach, I'm never going to tell him where to go, but wherever he ends up going and then blah, 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 blah. But he always used wherever he keeps it, wherever he's going to end up going. And I kept saying to Oliver, I was like, Oliver, he's committed to Minnesota. He's coming to Minnesota. He goes, I know that. But wherever he ends up, and I think there was a hope in the back of their mind they could still – basically keep their family in Mississippi, but we're going to take really good care of them. Justin Wally is a very, very special player. Uh, cannot wait to have him here. Uh, again, Mr. Mississippi for 6A, head into Minnesota, uh, and going to be a tremendous impact player for us, uh, hopefully next year. Next up, uh, Devin Williams out of Dublin Kaufman High School in Dublin, Ohio. Coach Crabtree's the head football coach there. Um, Mom, Jessica, Dad, G., uh, he's a mid-year linebacker was going to be a focus for us. We needed to be able to get more depth at linebacker, not only get more depth, we had to be able to be able to continue to create that competition as we continue to bring more players in as we get into the future. Uh, flip from an SEC school, um, never visited. I give all these kids a lot of credit, all these young people a lot of credit for never visiting and still committing to a place that you haven't seen. Think about how hard that is. And not only think about that, think about how hard that is for – the coaches and the player, and then still sign the historic class we did with a lower number than most years. That tells you how wonderful of a class this is. Uh, again, six best linebacker, six highest ranked linebacker uh, ever to be here. So there is our 2021 recruiting class. 
again, excited for every one of them. Uh, so excited about our future. Uh, so proud of everybody that's been involved in this whole thing. Uh, and it's been quite the journey. Uh, even today's been the journey. Uh, we've had signing day. We've had practice. Our coaches are in film. We've had radio shows, TV. Now you. Uh, it's just uh, one of those uh, one of those days that you're going to remember for a long time. Uh, that you just keep going. So I'm glad I have the energy I do because today it's it's one of those days that's definitely needed. And uh, like I said, this is one of my favorite days of the year. And our players practiced awesome today. On top of that, so that made me feel really good too. So with that said, after I announced all that. Uh, we'll open up for another round of questions, and then uh, we'll let you all go. Andy said we're down to about 10 minutes. Uh, yep, 13 minutes is on my clock, Coach. Uh, we'll go to Ryan Burns. Uh, and if you have a question for uh, Coach, send me a message in chat, but we'll start with Ryan Burns. Uh, PJ, I wanted to ask you about having 11 wins in your back pocket for this entire recruiting class, because I think people think uh, after you won 11 games last year, that the, you, they should see immediate returns on recruiting, but when in reality you only had a couple of weeks to finish off the class. So in this 2021 class, you had 11 wins in your back pocket for the entire year. Do you think that helped get into some of these homes, like in places like Washington, Arizona, and Mississippi, that maybe you wouldn't have got into without them? Well, we recruited all over. Uh, I, I don't think winning ever hurts you. I think it does help you, but I don't think it makes everything. Uh, maybe it made some people turn their heads a little bit more. Uh, I think, you know, that Penn State game last year, beating Auburn last year, and again, having an 11-win season, I mean, that's the most wins since 1904. So for me to ignore it and say it's not beneficial somehow, some way, I think that would, would be an inaccurate statement. But do I think it's everything? No. Do I think it helps you get in the door? Absolutely. I think cultural sustainability helps you get in the door. I think your brand helps you get in the door. I think your culture, which is – Everybody knows our row the boat culture, whether people like it or don't like it, people talk about it, uh, love it, uh, make fun of it. They know it. And I think that helps you get in the door, whatever it is. Uh, I think that's starting to become what Minnesota is all about, this national brand. Uh, but just because we won 11 games, I mean, you know how hard it is to win 11 games. Remember, that hasn't happened since 1904. That's a long time, everyone. And so it's not going to necessarily happen every year. But the vision of what we're going to be and the goal of that is we have a chance to be in that type of contention every year. You have a chance to do it. Some years you can, some years you will, some years you won't. But recruiting is going to constantly be that lifeline that you constantly feed that are going to be able to let you get back to those types of wins. There's always going to be peaks. There's going to be valleys. Look at Northwestern. Look what they've accomplished. They've won the West two out of the last three years. I mean, everybody's when have they had the number one recruiting class in the West? I'm not sure. When have they ever had that? When have they ever had the number one, uh, you know, top two recruiting class in the Big Ten? This is about culture. This is about fit. This is about, you know, coaching, development. This is about getting the right people. Uh, and there's a lot of things that go involved in that. So uh, we're really excited about where we are, where we rank, and what we do. We just read off all the historical things we did for our place right now, for exactly where we are right now, and now time, it's right where we should be. And it's right where we are. And uh, I'm really, really proud of our staff, proud of these players, and look forward to gelling them with the guys that are coming back next year. Let's go to Megan Ryan. PJ, um, I'm interested to know, uh, for the guys that are enrolling early, getting on campus probably pretty soon now, um, how, I guess, do you work with that transition? Because they're entering college, I mean, like you said, it's different, right, than it has been in previous years because classes are – are virtual and you know maybe we don't even know really what the spring is going to look like for you guys I guess yet so how I guess do you help them they're already making this big transition to college but then with the kind of added layer of it be kind of being unknown for a lot of you guys yeah you're as transparent as you possibly can be one thing I think we've done a good job of is showing these freshmen even the 2020 freshmen that are here what life is usually like right when you're here what does it usually look like? What are the, what are videos do we show our guys that what it usually is during this particular time or in the summer, what activities do we do? Where we go? What do we do as a team? How we travel showing them, listen, this is, a, this is not a normal year. So get it some, give it some time and you'll get all this back. Cause to, uh, these guys are going to have a little bit of a transition at the beginning, but think about the 20 class, what they had to overcome. They, they get recruited into all this 
And then they get here and it's nothing for their first year like they ever thought because of the pandemic. And what makes this program so special is the activities, the togetherness, the bonding, doing everything together, our Twin City area, the activities, our state, all the things we can do here together. And when that's taken away from you, it's like, wait a second, wait a second. And I, what happened to all this other stuff? But it's, it's, it's COVID related. And then we, they know that it's coming. Same thing with our 21 class. There will be a transition with that. Our academic people know how to be able to transition them virtually from where they were in high school to where they are. There's an orientation process. Uh, the freshmen always meet with me weekly of exactly where they are academically, athletically, socially, spiritually. Our board of Halfers that meet with everybody surrounding them, non-coaches, uh, from uh, the mental health specialists to our trainers, to our doctors, uh, to our wait staff, to our nutritionists, uh, to our spiritual uh, attachments that we can, that players want that. It's, it's, it's our support systems, our operations department, recruiting department, those meetings, helping these young people, looking at how they're dealing with things, and then having proactive step-by-step um, -step resources in place. And having our young people that are on our team right now, our student athletes, help them through this. And we're all going to go through it together because we know that everybody thinks you're going to get to 21 and it's going to be over and it's going to be fine and you can't wait for 21. We all know the first few months um, are going to be very similar to what we're going through. Um, hopefully those subside at some point. And we can get back to some type of normalcy and, and learn a lot from what we've all been through. But until then, we'll just constantly keep educating, monitoring, developing, being there for them, have an incredible amount of empathy, uh, and, and just continue to develop these student athletes and academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, the best way we can. All right, we have one question left. We'll go to Andy Greeter. Uh, you started, you get to wrap it up, and I think you got six minutes. So go ahead, Andy. Uh, first question is, who won in the Scrabble game? Uh, I, I think I won a game. I think Sanford won a game. I, did not, I don't think Coach Callahan won a game. Yeah, I think we I think we took him, we robbed him of that. We played multiple games though. That was it was a quite a big snowstorm. We were there for a while. Yeah, time to kill. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, continuing to have to recruit guys. Uh, in particular, Bucky. He comes in at the with a guy that's now at TCU and was close with him, and you know he was a coveted guy in the Midwest. And you have a commitment, but you still have to keep recruiting. And we talked about Justin Wally too. What is the challenge, just recruiting wise, where the commitment is is one hurdle, but it's not uh, it's not the final uh, final finish line. That's a great question, Andy. You know, there's a, there's a saying in our profession that the recruitment never even begins until the person commits. Um, I, I think that when you look at that, the commitment's one part of it, uh, and then there's the the holding on to it because I think a lot of people we go through it every year, and I think a lot of student athletes when they commit, they think everybody just shuts down, they respect that, and it's over. No one's ever going to call me again but it actually doubles, triples, quadruples, and it just keeps getting more and more. And then all of a sudden, that's when you start to see these guys hesitate, doubt. It's consistency, Andy. It's just being exactly who you are every single day and building those relationships. Sometimes it parts on both ways. Sometimes it parts on their way, uh, from their side. It's just part of it. Uh, and as you go through, I mean, remember, a lot of these kids are committing nine, 10 months ago. And as you, you know, you might know them for three, four, five months, which could be a long time. But then as you continually get to know people over the next eight, nine months, that's even more time to get to know if it's a right fit and if it's the right place. And if there's any hesitation and any doubt, a lot of people don't sign. And I don't, I, you know, when there's hesitation, you don't want that. You don't want that from the student athlete's perspective. And you sure as heck don't want that from the coaching perspective of somebody in your program who's doubting or hesitating or doesn't know if that's for them. Because I think it's not about just the ones, you know, that you, that you don't get. It's about the ones you do get that maybe don't fit. That, that's really hard at times. Uh, so uh, that, that's the saying in our profession. And we see it every single year. But whoever we're recruiting, they're going through it for the first time and the only time. We see it every year. So we know what to expect and how to be able to proactively do everything we can to prevent it uh, and then do everything we can to understand when it does happen. All right. Thank you, Coach, and thank you for your time today. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Row the boat, Sky Ma. Go Gophers. See you. Thank you all for attending. We'll be sure to put this, uh, this video in our digital press box. Thank you all very much.